Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope, I hope, I hope everybody is hanging in there and uh, having a wonderful day and a good afternoon to all of you. I am completely, totally grateful for the privilege that is mine uh, to be here and to be a part of this conversation with you. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for tuning in. Today we are talking to Dr. Umar Johnson and that uh, we're waiting for him to come on. And as soon as he does, we will talk to him and have what I believe will be a great, great conversation with him. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Thank you for waving at me. Um, thank you, Smitty. Yes, yes, yes. Tony, good to, good to see you. Good to see you on. Thank you so much for being on. Yes. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Yes. So we're waiting for Umar Johnson to come on. Um, I, I, um, I'm excited for the opportunity to talk to him and to be in dialogue and conversation with him. Um, I think there's some interesting things to talk about with respect to education and what's going on. Uh, and so, uh, I am looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. I hear you, Tiffany. Tiffany said, Dr. Umar is the truth. All right. All right. It's good to have people speaking well of you. That's important. Good to have people speaking well of you. So I think that that's incredibly important. And as soon as he comes on, we will talk with him. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always, you know, one of the things I try to do on my show you know, that comes on the network on Fox Soul is always try to give people an opportunity to represent themselves and represent what it is they believe and what they think in the best possible light. I want people to, you know, to always be able to say what they want to say to the world. And I, I want to give Dr. Johnson that opportunity today. You know, this isn't our normal show format, but I, certainly to those of you who are tuning in, and those of you who will watch this later, you know, we want to, uh, you know, make sure that we're in conversation. So as soon as soon as Dr. Umar Johnson uh, gets on, um, we will patch him in. Dr. Johnson, if you're on, wave at me. Let me know you're on. Um, so I will know that you are here, sir. Uh, but we're still waiting on Dr. Johnson to come on. Uh, if you have some questions for me. Since I'm here, <laughs> ask me some questions and we will, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. She said he's here. Okay. Well, apparently I don't know what his, uh, oh, there he is. There he is. All right. Hey, Dr. Hi. Umar John. How you doing, brother? Honor's all mine, brother. Glad to be on your show. Glad to have you, man. Is it well with you? Is it well with your house? Is it well with those you love? Uh, yes, sir. Everyone is well through the grace of God, and we're hoping that the whole African family is well as well, because it's a challenging time. There have been some deaths. Fortunately, no one that I know, but of course, we're still con uh, concerned anytime a member of the family passes on, no matter how extended. Absolutely. And I, and I think in, in these times, it's important that we stop and ask each other that question. Is it well with you? Is yes, it sir. well with your house? You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I, um, I, want, I, want, I, know, I know that you are a huge advocate and proponent of education. And yes, sir. One of the things that I love about you, by the way, Thank is, you. Is, is how committed and how, and how rich your commitment is to education and the development of the mind and the character. Yes, sir. Um, so I'm going to make a statement, and you tell me what you think about it, if that's sure. all right. All right. So it turns out 
that the public school system is, in fact, the national child care system. Uh, it is, and it is also the national junior prison system as well. Ooh, say more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been told, Dr. Sean, from judges in the tri-state area, so I'm speaking of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, as well as Delaware, you could even throw Maryland in. But Ooh. I've been told by judges, black judges, that their number one referral source for new juvenile prosecutions is not the street police, it is the public school. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. They receive, they receive more adjudications for youth from the schools than they receive from the community. So what does that say about public education? Well, for me, there's four things that have to be changed. Mm -hmm. And this is how, in my opinion, Dr. Sean, this is why I don't consider Betsy DeVos to be serious about the education of our children. Fact. I don't consider most of our elected officials, black or white, Democratic or Republican, to be serious about the education of our children because there's four things that have to happen if you really care about educating black children, particularly the boys. Number mm -hmm. one, you have to bring more black men into the classroom, not as aides, not as disciplinarians, yes. not as one-on-one -on -one supports, but as licensed and certified instructional teachers. That's right. Black boys need black men. As long as 90% of our teachers are white middle-class women who are culturally disconnected from the young men they're responsible for teaching, we will never win this. We will never win this. We have to understand that there is a cultural disconnect between the white female teacher and the black male child. And the only way we're going to address that is by bringing more black men into the classroom. I applaud that, sir. I'm with that 100%. What's the other three? The other three. Number two, there needs to be a national moratorium and referendum on the special education system. Mm. Dr. Sean. Now, as you know, I'm a certified school psychologist. I've been that for 20 years. I've evaluated an entire generation of black children. And I'm telling you, we have too many black boys who are classified as reading disabled, who are not, classified as math disabled, who are not, classified as emotionally disturbed, who are not, and classified as mildly intellectually disabled, who are not, and who are being <laughs> misdiagnosed with right. ADHD. Right. ADHD right. is a crisis. And after they get misdiagnosed with ADHD, which in my opinion is nothing other than ain't no daddy at home disorder. I'm going to say it again. ADHD is ain't no daddy at home disorder. And once you get diagnosed with ain't no daddy at home disorder, they want to give you Ritalin. They want to give you right. Adderall. They right. want to give you right. surgery. They want to give you right. metadata. Dr. Sean, they are turning black boys into drug addicts. America has an opium epidemic right now. America has an opium epidemic right now. Nobody's talking about the relationship between the overdiagnosing of ADHD and the opium epidemic. Dr. Sean, I am of the professional opinion that at least 30% of the young opioid addicts in America were the ADHD babies of 10 to 20 years ago. ADHD mm. drugging has become the opioid epidemic and no one's talking about it because the drug companies are so powerful that they can pay people not to talk about it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly glad that you are, but you owe me two more, so give me the last two. Okay, so in addition to the referendum on special education, the mm -hmm. third thing that has to happen in America schools is there needs to be a radical redistribution of where the funds go. Because right. even though, listen, every school district can use more money. We know that. But guess what? The most important factor in a child learning is not how much money is spent on the child. Mm. It's how much commitment the teacher has to teaching the child. I love and that. I argue... I argue from the, this is my position. We don't have a budget deficit. We have a deficit in people who know how to use the budget. Let me say it again. We don't have a budget deficit. We have a deficit in people who know how to use the budget. Right. In other words, how much money is the football team getting? 
Right. How much right. money is the right. athletics program getting? Budgets now, are moral documents, right? Absolutely. Right. So, Dr. Sean, if you're spending more money on your athletic program than your reading program, we have a problem. And it tells, it's, it tells me where your values are. Absolutely. And the right. fourth one, Dr. Sean, is we as African Americans have to fight to bring back the industrial building trade training programs mm. in our high schools. When mm. you talk about mass incarceration, when you talk about mass incarceration, Dr. Sean, you're yeah. talking about mass unemployment of young black males. And right. why are they unemployed? Because since the 1980s, the Department of Education has had a policy against educating black males to be plumbers, carpenters, right. electricians, right. roofers, HVAC specialists, barbers, welders, auto mechanics. Those, Dr. Sean, right. are the skills that pay the bills. The skills that pay the bills. Our young men are no longer being taught the skills that pay the bills. And as a result of that, they're ending up in prison where they are being used for somebody else to pay their bills watching right. them as a prison guard in America's jails. And, and, and watching them work for, for slave wages for Absolutely. major corporations like Victoria's Secret and other places Absolutely. that use that use prison labor. So let, let me let me ask you an additional question. First, all of that is rich and insightful and I appreciate it. No and problem. I, and I know everybody watching can appreciate those four things that you just gave us. And, and it makes me ask you an additional question because there's a lot of homeschool homeschooling going on now, right? Mm -hmm. We all got to be in the house and everybody's homeschooling. So, so here's my initial question, then I'm going to follow up with a second one. The first one is, when this is over, should, should parents, should black parents, send their students back to school? Okay, great question. Here is the blessing within the crisis. Mm. The silver lining amidst this coronavirus, Christ, coronavirus crisis is the fact that it gives all African-American parents in America the opportunity to test out homeschooling as a viable intervention and alternative to public charter parochial and private schooling. So yeah. according to the National Center for Educational Statistics, homeschooling in America between 1999 and 2012 increased from 850,000 homeschooling households Mm. To today, where we have two million homeschooling households, I didn't know that. Oh yes, I didn't know. Oh that. yes, white people are homeschooling their children even more than black people, which, in my opinion, is quite ironic. Because if you look at yeah. Yeah. one out of every four black boys graduating, you look at one out of every three black boys on psychiatric medication, you look at one out of four black boys in special education. You look at one out of four black boys being expelled from America's public and charter schools. You would think more black parents would be homeschooling. That's what I assume. Yeah, yeah. But there's an economic reason why they don't. And you and I both know what that is. And that is many of our parents have to work two and three jobs yeah. in order to make ends yeah. meet. And with over 70% of black children being raised by single black mothers, mm. those single black mothers, our sisters who do a great job, they have to work. They gotta to do work. Jobs. So no one wants to leave the children at home unattended and understandably so. Now, the benefits of homeschooling, three mm. quick ones. Number one, you control the environment. You control the curriculum. You control the lesson planning. That is the number one benefit of homeschooling black children. Yeah. The second benefit, it can be less structured. It can be more informal. It can be made to be more comfortable. And more dialogical. And more dialogical. Mm -hmm. Third benefit is you can combine subjects so that you can teach your child how to read, but at the same time you're teaching them black history. Interdisciplinary. Can, uh, interdisciplinary. Yeah, I love so that. Yeah. There's a million benefits of homeschooling, Dr. Sean, but at the same time, being an educator, and a certified school psychologist and a doctor of clinical psychology, I have to give you my concerns as well for homeschooling. Please. Number one, if the parent is not disciplined or if the parent cannot discipline the child, 
that homeschool situation will fail. You mm. have to be a disciplined parent in order to be a good homeschooler. That's if true. you lack discipline, you don't need to be homeschooling. And if you have a child who lacks discipline, then you need to find someone else to homeschool or you're going to have to stick them back into one of these institutions. You must have discipline in order for homeschooling to work. That's number one. Mm. Number two, you don't have a principal to supervise how effective your homeschool operation is. Yeah, you need outcomes. You need outcomes. See, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a certified school principal, right? Yeah, so yeah. For years, I've been a school administrator. My job is to do what? Make sure teachers teach and make sure they do it well. Right. Well, when you're a homeschooling parent, you don't have a supervisor. There's no, no principal looking at you. So obviously, one of the concerns is quality assurance, making mm. sure the children are getting what the children need. And mm. the third concern about homeschooling is that you have to take it seriously. What yeah. do I mean when I say you have to take it seriously? Dr. Sean, I've seen some crisis in our community where parents have homeschooled their children for three, five, 10 years, mm. stick them back in a public or charter school, and now the child is looking like they're intellectually disabled because the parent never committed to doing a good job. Yeah. So here's my three major recommendations. Three major recommendations. Number one, choose a space in your house and a time for homeschooling. Mm. There must be a space in your house. Dedicated space. Dedicated to homeschooling. Yeah. Don't yeah. allow your entire house to be the prerogative of your homeschooling uh, program, Dr. Shaw, yeah. because yeah. it's going to break down. It's not going to be taken seriously. And most of all, neither the parent nor the child will be able to tell the difference between right. when we are homeschooling reset. Yeah. Yeah, when yeah. we are not. So whether it's going to be the basement, whether it's going to be the kitchen, whether it's going to be the living room, whether it's going to be a bedroom, whether it's going to be the attic, make sure everyone knows where homeschooling takes place. Right, right. And then you also need to determine how much time will you spend homeschooling each day. Mm -hmm. I have the Dr. Umar Johnson rule. What is the Dr. Umar Johnson rule? It's 30, 60, 90, Dr. Sean. And what that means is if the child is in pre-K to third grade, you should spend 30 minutes a day on each of four subjects. If the child is between fourth and seventh grade, you should spend 60 minutes per day on four subjects. Mm. And if the child is between ninth and 12th grade, you spend 90 minutes per day on each subject. What that works out to, Dr. Sean, is two hours of homeschooling per day or 10 hours a week for pre preschool to third grade. Mm. And then it becomes four hours a day or 20 hours a week from fourth grade to seventh grade, okay? And then it becomes six hours a day or 30 hours a week for your high schoolers. Mm. No, I, I follow that. And I, I, think, I think what's rich about that is, is, is the kind of thoughtful um, preparation you're asking parents to engage in. Have to prepare. You're, yeah, you're asking them not just to accept the framework yes. without, without also putting their heart into what it yes. is they're, they're, they're seeing about the world. Because it's one thing to be able to say, public school system is terrible and, and it's not serving us. Is another thing to say, I'm going to commit myself and my heart and my time to doing something about it in my own house. Absolutely. Which and, and, to the next point, which is curriculum. Yes. Curriculum and lesson planning. Curriculum is what you're going to teach. Lesson planning is how you're going to teach it. So, yeah. for example, Dr. Sean, you go into the kitchen, you're going to make a salad. Your children don't like to eat salad, but you're making a salad. That's the curriculum. Solid. Now, how are you going to hook that salad up in such a way that would make your children want to ingest and digest it? What right. type of dressing are you going to put on that salad? We're going to add some raisins. We're going to put a couple drops of honey. What do we need to add to the salad to make them eat it? That's the lesson plan. The yeah. lesson plan breaks the curriculum down to digestible chunks so the children will eat it. Here's my system for emergency homeschool planning. Yes, give me that. Give me that. Four subjects. Four subjects. 
with four goals for each one of the subjects for the four weeks of the month. So for example, Dr. Sean, in seven days, we will be in April. Mm -hmm. So let's declare April the first national black emergency homeschooling marking period. So every month is a marking period. April is a marking period. May is the second marking period. June is the third marking period. And the reason I recommend, Dr. Sean, that we treat every four weeks as a marking period is because we don't know how long the right. shutdown is going to happen. Right. Some kids are going to go back in four weeks. Some kids are going to go back in eight weeks. Some children are not going back at all. So right. do it in sets of four, treating every month as a distinct marking period that allows you to always plan without over planning. Mm. So the four subjects I recommend are language arts and reading, we're going to combine science and math. We're going to combine them. So math and science is going to become one, even okay. though it's usually two. The third one is going to be writing, okay, and written thought. And I mm -hmm. refer to writing as written thinking because in order to write, you have to use every aspect of learning. You have to think, yeah. you have to analyze. Yeah, your whole you being. You right. evaluate. You have yeah. to synthesize. So for me, writing is written thought. It makes you think. That's the third subject. And the fourth subject, Dr. Sean, is Black history and mm. Pan-African studies. Yes. People may say, where's government? Where's history? Where's civics? Well, oh, guess what, Dr. There. Sean? If you're teaching Black history, right. you're going to be there. teaching government. Right. You're going to be teaching right. civics, right. and you're going to be teaching history. You see? So we, we snuck science in with math, and we snuck government history and civics in with Black history and Pan-African studies. So you got these four subjects. You're going to choose four goals for each subject. And each one of those four goals will apply to the four weeks of April, the four weeks of May, the four weeks of June. So mm -hmm. every month you're coming up with four goals for language and reading, four goals mm -hmm. for science and math, mm -hmm. four goals for writing and written thought, four goals for Black history, Pan-African studies. So at the end of April, Dr. Sean, your child should have learned, mastered, come to understand developed skills for 16 new academic curriculum objectives mm. that they did not previously understand wow wow i love that and I, I tell you why i love it i love it because it's simple people can get it right away you know the four week module is something everybody lives with as opposed to semesters and and and, and uh, what's it called? Uh, whatever it's called. Quadrimester, yeah. semester, yeah. Uh, all of that. yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. Um, but that but that, you know, it 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 the beauty of this conversation to me is that people who are watching who have kids are being invited to reimagine their role in educating their children. Because we have, we've become so used, and, and, I, and I, I'm guilty of it as well, is we, hand, we handed our children over and yeah. said, go learn and you teach my child. Yes. Right? And the only engagement has been parent-teacher conference, graduation, or if there's a problem. What you're inviting parents to do is to say, no, from start to finish, from the bottom to the top, in the middle of the curriculum, to the, all the way out to the edges, Black parents have to have a hand and how their children's minds and characters are being designed. Absolutely. And some people may naturally ask the question, Dr. Sean, according to your system, Dr. Umar, your emergency homeschooling system for black parents, you're saying that preschool to third graders will get 10 hours a week and fourth through seventh graders will get 20 hours a week and ninth through 12th graders will get 30. Well, how does that compare to 35 hours that our children usually get in school? Mm -hmm. And here's how I answer that, Dr. Sean, as a former school administrator and as a school psychologist. Half of the 35 hours, as you and I know, because we've been through public school, half of that is not instructional time. It's right. transitions, right. it's recess, it's right. lunch, it's art, it's gym, it's discipline, it's fire drills, it's all this other stuff. Your child does not receive 35 hours of instruction a week. No. They are yeah. babysat for 35 hours. Yeah, yeah. They are babysat for yeah, 35 hours. That's what we started the conversation off at. at. 
the actual time, Dr. Sean, that they spend learning, you'll be surprised if they're even getting the 10 that you're homeschooling or the 20 right. that you're homeschooling. So get away from quantity and let's focus on quality. No, that's rich. Do, do me a favor because I want to change gears before you go. Sure. I want to respect your time. And I know you're doing a lot, a lot of interviews, a lot of, a lot of conversations. Um, but is there a place that people can go to get your emergency uh, yes. school curriculum? Where can they go yes. to get that? A couple things. Number one, they can go to my website, drumarjohnson.com. Mm -hmm. They can reach me there. They can also email me, drumarjohnson at yahoo.com. So that's D-R-U-M-A-R Johnson at Yahoo. They can also call me at 844 for Dr. Umar. So that's 844-4-D-R-U-M-A-R if they need to reach me. And I do consultations with parents, not only for homeschooling, but other issues, autism, ADHD, mm. reading disabilities, mm. uh, legal issues with the school, not educating your child. Any problem that a Black parent has about educating a Black child or serving their mental health needs I'm one of the people that they can come to for that assistance. And I, I appreciate that. And listen, I'm, I, got, I got two more questions for you, if that's okay. I'm okay. okay. Let, 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 let me say this. When, when all this is over, you're going to have to come to L.A. and be on the show, man. I'd love to. I'd love yeah, to. Yeah, because I, I, I enjoy talking to you. I, you, you, have a, you have a rich and dexterous mind, and I, I, I love talking to people who are brilliant. So let me ask you this, because, you know, a lot of people – I've heard of Dr. Umar Johnson. They, they've seen the, you know, on the Breakfast Club, social media. Tell me, I want to ask you about you. What's the biggest misconception that people have about Dr. Umar Johnson? Great question, Dr. Sean. The greatest, the largest, the hugest, the biggest misconception that people have about Dr. Umar Johnson is that I hate the people that I disagree with. Mm. You understand? That's rich. If I disagree with a certain lifestyle, if I disagree with a certain philosophy, it's assumed that I hate those people and nothing could be further from the truth. I became a psychologist because I love people, because mm. I want to heal people. I made that decision in the third grade. I was a young child when I decided that mental health and mental healing is what I wanted to give my life to. So how can someone who dedicated their life to healing people spend their life hating people. It doesn't make sense. You know, it's interesting about that because there's certain subjects you and I don't agree on. Yes, sir. Right? We don't, we, and we ne we ain't gonna never agree on them. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what I love about this engagement is exactly what you just said. We yes, don't sir. have to agree on every damn thing. Yes. yes. One of us to be in community and relationships. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big affirmer of LGBTQ people. Mm -hmm. You don't happen to be that. Yes, That's sir. That's fine. You right. You know what I'm saying? You as know, long as the respect is there, the respect the must be there. Exactly. If the respect is there, we're fine. And, 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 and in this case, it's absolutely there. Yes, absolutely sir. Yes, there. sir. So, so let, let me ask you this, because I want to, I want to, I, I always like to leave my audience with a sense of what is possible, what remains true, what remains deep, what remains resistant about us. And, and, and talk to me about how this might actually be, all this coronavirus how this might actually be a time for unity for Black people. Absolutely. Again, one of the silver linings in this coronavirus crisis, Dr. Sean, is it is forcing Black people to give up our addictions to any institutions or activities associated with the American white power structure. Mm. What am I talking about? If you're a sister who has been frying and dying and weaving your hair, for the past 20 years, well, guess what? The shops are closed. You're going to have to go back to some Madam C.J. Walker, and you're going to have to dig in your nappy roots, and you're going to have to give yourself an African style because mm. you can't access the perm. You can't access the weed. So this is an opportunity, Dr. Sean. Look at my hair. Absolutely. I need a haircut. Yes, sir. <laughs> it gives us a chance to do what? Detox. Yeah. Detox. Yeah. yeah. Go to McDonald's. Burger King, detox. You can't go to the movie theater, detox. It is forcing us, Dr. Sean, to stop depending on America for things that Black people can do for ourselves. Mm. This coronavirus is going to make us what we used to be, a self-dependent people. Mm, that's rich. 
that's rich man i i think i think that's a good place to leave it because i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be able to come up with anything better than that <laughs> that was rich let me let me say something to you before you go i want to thank you for your commitment to black people thank you i want to thank you for how you love us i want to thank you for how you challenge us and i want to thank you for even when we don't understand you or attack you that you persist in a certain love Yes, sir. And, and I and I, I admire that and I honor that. And and I and I and I hope that it, as years to come and in days to come, that that you will that the creator will bless you and make you a thousand times greater than what you are. Oh, thank you, Baba. Powerful words. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Thank you for tuning in. Right. Take care. All bye. right, bye-bye. All right now.